Thank you. Before I get started, I want to make sure we put in a, a plug for the virtual reality that Glenn mentioned earlier. We have a set of those goggles over here at our booth that you'll see during lunch. It's part of our It Can Wait campaign. And it's a really eye-opening experience. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat to see the advancements that have come along and the technologies that are available there for us today. So make sure you get a chance to go visit Whitney over there and uh, try on those goggles. It's, it's pretty amazing if you haven't seen that so far. Make sure that you take the full 360 view while you're in there. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing the things that are happening. So thanks for having me today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about uh, mobility. I'm gonna start off with perhaps the most obvious statement that we might hear, hear today. Uh, consumers and business demand for wireless data is on the rise, right? Most obvious statement that you'll hear today. Um, as I looked around the room and as I was preparing for today, I did a few things on my phone. So I'm gonna plant a seed with you, a little bit of a seed. You know, how have you used your mobile device in the last few years? What's different about the device that you're using today than specifically 10 years ago, right? 10 years ago is not that long in the industry anymore. So I'll get back to that in a minute, but we'll, we'll talk about that. So I just want to lay a foundation. I talk to a lot of people who still ask me how long it takes for my cell call, cell call to get up to the satellite and back down to their phone. <laughs> and so I like to set this foundation of just some of the wireless fundamentals that we have, right? wireless devices and think about all the changes that we've seen in the last few years and the changes that we expect in the next coming years. Glenn also mentioned Internet of Things and I'll talk about that. Spectrum, right? That's one of our most valuable resources. We spend billions of dollars with the fed federal government on obtaining and managing this spectrum. Cell sites, of course, number three, including small cells, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And here's uh, our fiber optic connection. That's one of the things I want to make sure that everybody remembers is that we are very dependent and have great partnerships with our landline fiber partners so that we can connect each one of our cell sites and take it back to our central offices and then get it out to the network, whatever that means, be that another cell site, be that the internet, whatever it is. So I just want to lay this foundation of devices, spectrum, sites, fiber optics, yes, we can do a little bit with satellite here, and we do some with microwave, but our best and experience comes over high-speed fiber optics, and that's what we're really striving for. And then our central offices back to wherever it is you're trying to get, right? So how have things changed? 150,000% increase in usage over the last few years since 2007. I specifically picked 2007 on purpose because I said, what were you doing with your device 10 years ago? What were you doing with that device 10 years ago? Well, I want to remind everybody in here that this device, this app-based device, nobody in here was using 10 years ago because it was only nine years ago in June of 2006 that the iPhone was introduced. So 10 years ago, the things that you were just doing here today, you weren't doing didn't exist. And that's the kind of growth that we're talking about. And I think it was Mike from Xfinity gave an unofficial number of doubling that traffic on his broadband network over the next 18 months. And we're seeing that same kind of growth. And we can expect that in the wireless industry as well. In fact, one of the keys not on the slide here is that last year, finally, we achieved 60% of our mobile data traffic happened because of video. And so video on our wireless devices exceeded 60% and is growing. It's going to continue to grow. So Mike also mentioned capacity, right? And capacity is one of our major focuses as well. Uh, capacity, what does that mean? And that's why I picked this picture. I like this analogy of adding lanes to the highway. We have existing cell sites and we add more radios. We buy that spectrum from the FCC and we add those more radios. And then there's this thing, and maybe some of you have heard of it, called LTE Advanced. It's been uh, advertised quite well lately. And that's combining those radios together, like increasing the speed limit to get those fast speeds, because we want to get you to those gigabit speeds as well. And there's a few different techniques that we have to be able to do that. So I put this up here because small cells is a big discussion in the industry as well. And I just wanted to remind folks that small cells is all about bringing the experience close to the customer, close to 
the devices that are being used, and it works in conjunction. It's not an either or kind of a situation. It's just like Wi-Fi. It's not an either or situation anymore. We use Wi-Fi. I can make Wi-Fi calls on my phone today, walk right outside, transition to the macro or the coverage cell network, and then if I get to a place that has needed capacity or that I need really high speed, I get close to this small cell and I can enhance that experience and that's how we get to those gigabit speeds. So all these things combine together to bring that enhanced experience. And, and I think that's one of the things I want to make sure and emphasize today is it's not really either or anymore. It isn't about the fiber just in the ground or isn't about just the Wi-Fi or just the cellular phone anymore. They all work together to bring these enhanced experiences. And, and Glenn talked about those uh, different things that they're using and he talked about medical. And I, I heard an ad right here on the radio last night as I was driving around town about healthcare and they were actually advertising that somebody moved their phone closer so that the remote nurse could look at the cut. I think the phrase on the advertisement was, oh, you did cut yourself, put that phone closer so I could see a little better. It was actually a nurse interaction over mobility, a wireless device, so that they could get some medical advice and treatment. I mean, those are the kinds of things that we're already doing, let alone where are we headed. So pictures of small cells, because that's going to be uh, a big part of the industry. We've got these uh, antennas up here on power poles, on light poles. You know, we just don't know where they were. We're always going to have some equipment, but there's lots of different options that we can do. In fact, some of our large cell sites look like this already today. Right? They're no longer these towers out in the farm field that you see anymore. Sometimes they're on tops of buildings, and, and you don't even see them. Just coverage advances, um, lots of investment. I think Mike also talked about the importance of investment as a capital intensive uh, environment and we need to continue that investment. I know AT&T is very proud of the fact that we've had billions and billions of dollars across the country over the last several years uh, invested in wireless industry. So where are we going? This is really kind of a slide uh, towards 2020. 5G, it's all the uh, talk right now. The standard has not been defined yet. We expect it to be defined sometime in 2018. Uh, all the carriers are doing some sort of research now to prepare for what that standard will look like. And again, I mentioned we want to have those 10 to 100 times faster than where we are today, which puts us into those gigabit speeds. Right? That's where we want to head. We want to make that access easy. We want to make it mobile for you so that you can have it anywhere that, that you need, as was mentioned earlier as well. Uh, we just talked about Project Air Gig. I like to reference this one as uh, another option for the last mile. Can we, the power infrastructure is already there. Can we get internet services there and then deliver that last mile faster, easier, more cost effective, right? So there's some projects that are coming and internet of things. And um, I've got some examples here, of internet of things and, and that's where Things are really booming and growing. And of course, drones, right? We just launched a drone program in July uh, within the company. We're focusing right now on inspections of our towers as well as testing stadiums more rapidly, more quickly, more real time. Um, and it's gonna grow from there. Now, when I first heard our drone program, I thought, how are we gonna fly a cell site over a stadium to help that. That's not what we're talking about, right? <laughs> we're not talking about putting full cell sites. Although I have seen one of our providers already uh, looking at using drone technology to deposit a temporary cell site on top of a roof for an emergency event. I thought that was pretty neat. Still needs that backhaul connection, so how's that gonna happen? They're gonna work through that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna move off of this slide really quick. It really. The, the point here is, and I think Glenn mentioned it, you know, 6.2 billion connected Internet of Things, whatever that means. And by 2025, we're headed for 27.7 billion things connected, right, to the Internet. Um, many of those are cars. We've already heard about connected cars. We've been working in that space. I uh, happened to do some work in Detroit about 15 years ago and was talking to the automakers out there about antenna optimization for the cars to, to make this happen. And so that was a lot of fun. Um, 
We're already working with top manufacturers, and it's more than just Wi-Fi in the car, right? This isn't just about giving the kids Wi-Fi so that they can have a quiet ride as you go around the country, right? It's more, it's about safety, right? It's about redirecting traffic actively. It's about waking up computers when they fall asleep. It's <laughs> all kinds of things. So, <laughs> see if the screen comes back alive. I think my next slide is the one that, uh... there we go, there we go. Oh. Well, the next slide, when it comes up, you'll see in the top left corner, it says there's 80 things connected to the internet every day right now. And by 2020, I believe it is, we're expecting 250 things connected every second, sorry. not. 80 things every second today, 250 things every second. I mean, that's pretty exponential growth. It's outpacing our human growth, for sure. But those are the kinds of things that we want, right? Our watches, our devices, things that I can't even imagine, right? How about, Glenn mentions the, the, the cities, right? Lighting, water, parking, energy grids. Can we redirect energy to where the demand is today? Can we redirect traffic and cut down on pollution? And, and other impacts. All right, remote monitoring infrastructure. I've got a, an example here in a couple of pages uh, that I really like. It's about monitoring water. Water's a huge issue, especially for us here in the West. And there was a study done um, where we put remote sensors on water. And what it did is acoustic sensors, and it just listened to the flow of the water. And when that flow changed, they knew there was an alert, there was a leak, there was something wrong that they didn't like. And they were able to act more quickly because of those Internet of Things that were connected. Public safety, office, obviously, right? One of the things I love about this page is this indoor locating. Many of you may know that today, with, with our 911 services and location service, indoor becomes kind of an issue because the GPS is on the phone, you go indoors, am I on the first floor, am I on the eighth floor? But as we bring those small cells and those Internet of Things closer to the user, that becomes more accurate and we can have better and faster response times. Use those apps, right? Uh, I was looking for parking in downtown uh, last night. How nice would it have been if I could have just pulled over, looked on the phone, and it would have told me there's four parking spaces right around the corner to head that direction. Or maybe audio, turn right, third space up on the right, go ahead and park. I mean, that would have been really handy. Um, connected street lights, which was just mentioned. Um, I was trying to think about how this might be used, but again, as I wandered around downtown last night, I, I, I liked the lighting. What if you had dimmable lights? And if there was an emergency situation, you had the opportunity to increase the lighting in a particular area for the first responders, and then dim it back down for energy savings a little bit later. I think there's, and uh, signs, go this way after the event. Um, speakers, remote speakers. So there's just, you know, whatever you can think of, whatever you're doing today, ask yourself, can I do that wirelessly? Wirelessly, Can I do that over a small uh, application? And here was the water example that we used. You know, we, we lose six billion gallons of water a day, um, this, this research. And if we could put these kinds of sensors on there, can we make a difference? I think we can, especially with aging infrastructure. If we can put a cheap, easy, fast sensor somewhere, we can make a huge difference. So I think Glenn mentioned it. I know that Mike mentioned it as well, working with the cities and partnerships, uh, making sure that we're making smart policy decisions to encourage that infrastructure uh, to be built, to encourage that investment, and to encourage that growth. Um, I think we've got that going on in Utah. I think we've got a good foundation here to continue to grow the industry, to continue to deliver these advanced services, these gigabit speeds no matter where you are, and we've got to use all the different technologies together to get there. So thank you for your time today.